It was quite a shock uh, to have somebody tell me that you have stage three lung cancer. You think you're gonna die. Anytime you have to go through a health crisis like this, I think it's not easy. I'm not looking forward to any of it. I just know I have to do it. The recommendation was that I go through radiation. So we are beginning the first stages of the radiation. Radiation therapy plays a very important role in terms of cancer care overall. It's one of the three main approaches to treatment, the other two being surgery and medical oncology using different systemic drugs like chemotherapy. Radiation is a non-invasive treatment. Radiation treatments are given on a daily basis with external equipment that basically passes the radiation through you. It's like a high energy x-ray. It's something that you don't feel. When the radiation hits the cancer cells, it causes damage that it can't repair and then they either die or basically do not grow back and that's essentially how the radiation works. Lung cancer is very common. It's also the most common cause of cancer death. Uh, that said, it's become increasingly something that we can treat and find ways to cure. This will be good for us to check our contours on. In general, the higher the stage in lung cancer, the greater the treatment necessary for the patient. So early stage lung cancer is treated with either surgery or sometimes radiation alone. And many times that's all the patient needs. But when you get to stage three lung cancer, patients usually need a combination of radiation with chemotherapy and sometimes surgery is also added. Lung cancer is usually found in stage three or four and only a small minority are actually found in stage one or two. They told me a lot today, but you know something? I really don't understand everything yet. Everything going as expected? I think so. Yeah. When you first come to the Radiation Oncology Center, it's very helpful to bring somebody with you. Another set of ears to hear the information is always very valuable for you. So it's very important that you ask questions repeatedly throughout your entire care to make sure that you're well informed and can make the best decision for yourself. And what area of the body are we treating? The lung. All right. When we decide to go ahead with treatment, we go ahead to what is called a simulation, which is the planning process for radiation treatment. The simulation is the first step in the treatment process. It is where we determine the treatment position we take imaging of the treatment area and also give the tattoo, the markings for the daily treatments. And then we're gonna help you lie down, okay? Patients coming in for simulation for lung cancer treatments will expect to be laying on their back in a comfortable position with their arms above by their head and also we will be making any immobilization devices specific to the patient. The immobilization device helps with positioning and reproducibility of their treatments. How's that feel on the top of your head, Jim? Good. Patients will receive tattoos as their markings for their daily treatments. All done. It helps them align for their treatment. These tiny markings they're giving on their sides and also in the center of their chest. That's the most inferior right there? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Once the patient is in position, we will do a CT scan to take images of the treatment area. So the physicians and the dosimetrists can use those images to make the treatment plan to determine the treatment fields and the treatment angles and dosing. We are gonna treat right across the suture line. A medical dosimetrist is a professional that works with us as part of a multidisciplinary team to help ensure that the radiation dose delivery is in the safest way possible to cover what we want to for treating the cancer and to limit the risk of any side effects for normal parts of the body. When we do the treatment planning, we look at the patient's 
tumor in a three-dimensional fashion. At the time of simulation, we can also do a special scan which incorporates the patient's breathing into the planning process. And by doing so, we can actually see how the tumor moves as the patient inhales and exhales. And we really can target and design a treatment that is within millimeters of, of the tumor. When a patient comes in for their daily radiation treatment, their radiation therapy team will do a double check, make sure that it's the right patient, the right treatment, and then they're going to be put into the same position as their simulation, which is a reproducible, comfortable position that was established on their first day. You feel like you're in there good? Oh yeah. After that, the therapist will set them up on the machine with their custom immobilization device, which was made for them during simulation. Patients will be uncovered from the waist up wearing a gown and we are always mindful of their privacy so we will uncover as needed. Patients will be asked to just breathe comfortably and not hold their breath. The patient can expect the machine to rotate around them. They'll hear some buzzing and clicking noise. Nothing will ever touch them and they won't feel a thing. The actual treatment time is brief. In general, the most common short-term side effects from a lung radiation treatment is fatigue, some skin irritation, inflammation of the esophagus, which leads to a patient feeling some discomfort when swallowing. All set. You did well. Thank you. The most common long-term side effects from radiation therapy are the changes that take place to the normal lung that surround the tumor. So some patients feel some short-term worsening shortness of breath. For some patients, it may be permanent. Because there are potential long-term side effects from radiation treatment that do not display themselves until months afterwards, patients should maintain a long-term relationship with their radiation oncologist even after their treatment is over. When I meet with patients, one of the important things that I ask about is if they're still smoking. A lot of people do feel that if they've got lung cancer, why not continue? But that's not the case. If you stop, it will lessen the side effects that you may get with treatment and also improve the chance of survival. I started uh, radiation down here five days a week. And I go for chemotherapy once every three weeks. Actually, I'm doing fine. I don't feel any different now than I felt before. It actually hasn't slowed me down. Radiation therapy for lung cancer can make a significant positive impact in a patient's life. In some cases, we can cure them of the cancer. In other cases, we can dramatically reduce the burden of disease and improve symptoms. We recognize that nobody wants to be here, but we want the patients to know that we are here for you to fight this battle with you. I'm not gonna say I'm not scared, I'm scared. I mean, I'm 76 years old, and I've got 12 grandchildren and seven great-grandchildren. I'd like to see them grow up. Oh, yeah. You bet I'm going to fight. I'm going to try with all my might to stay alive.